Hi, I'm Gary Powney. I'm Tom Oliver. And we're here to talk to you about a paper we've recently had published in the journal Methods in Ecology and Evolution, published alongside co-authors David Roy and Daniel Chapman. The title of the paper is Measuring Functional Connectivity Using Long-Term Monitoring Data. It's thought that current extinction rates are thought to be 100 to 1,000 times that of the past half a billion years. And with an ever-increasing human population density, this extinction rate can only be predicted to rise. And as a result, many scientists now believe that we may be on the brink of a sixth mass extinction. Land use change is one of the main drivers of biodiversity loss. Agricultural intensification and increased urbanisation often result in the breakdown of large continuous habitat patches, such as the one that I'm surrounded in here, into smaller, more sparsely distributed habitat patches, such as these. A problem known as habitat fragmentation. Now this leads to smaller, more isolated populations and it's a real problem for conservation because smaller patches are more likely to face extinction and if a local extinction event does occur, they're less likely to be recolonised by what are known as rescue effects. An additional problem of habitat fragmentation is that it leads to genetic isolation and inbreeding depression. One way to reduce habitat fragmentation is to increase the suitability of the landscape between habitat patches, enabling individuals to move from one population to another. In other words, we want to increase the functional connectivity of landscapes. There are a number of ways of measuring functional connectivity. For example, one is called mark release recapture. We simply catch a butterfly, mark it, and release it. We do this hundreds or even thousands of times, and we revisit the same site at a later date. If we recapture the same individual, we consider how far it travelled and across which habitat types it passed. Another method for measuring functional connectivity is called landscape genetics. So here we consider how genetically divergent two different isolated populations are. However, both these methods are quite time consuming and expensive. So, in this study, we investigate the possibility of using population synchrony as a measure of functional connectivity. Now, population synchrony is a measure of the similarity in the population dynamics between sites, with more synchronous sites increasing and decreasing in population abundance together. In this study, we predict there will be a positive correlation between functional connectivity and population synchrony. The study species used in this work was the speckled wood butterfly. We chose this species as it's abundant, widespread, and the information regarding its ecology and life history are well known. So we use data from the UK Butterfly Monitoring Scheme, which is a survey of butterfly populations. So how it works is uh, voluntary recorders will walk a transect, which is a set route of about one to three kilometers through the countryside. And in a box about five meters wide and five meters in front, the recorders will uh, identify butterflies and record the number of different species as they walk the transect. And this is repeated about 27 weeks throughout the year, for, throughout the flight season of the butterflies. So this transect here is uh, Swinkham Down in Oxfordshire, England. And actually just across the plain, we have, uh, Ast where the hill drops down to the plain, we have Aston Rowant, which is another UK butterfly monitoring scheme transect. Uh, in total, there are about a thousand active transects in the UK, some of which have been running from about 1976. And it's from these transects that we take the data and we can create an annual index of abundance of each species. So, for example, from Aston Rowant and Swinkham Down, we might take the annual index of abundance of the speckle wood butterfly. And the correlation of these indices is our measure of synchrony. And this is repeated for every pairwise comparison of sites in the UK. We needed to calculate the suitability of the landscape between all pairwise site combinations for the speckled wood butterfly. First, we used the presence only species distribution model to identify habitat preference of the speckled wood. From this, we created a suitability surface of all one kilometer grid cells in Britain. For all pairwise site combinations, matrix suitability was identified as the average habitat preference value of all grid cells within a three kilometer wide linear buffer between the sites. 
A variety of factors are known to impact population synchrony. These include habitat similarity, position in range, and geographic and climatic difference between sites. After accounting for these synchronising factors, we ran a linear regression of population synchrony against landscape suitability for all pairwise site comparisons. After accounting for other synchronising factors, we found a positive correlation between landscape suitability and population synchrony. This provides the intriguing possibility that population synchrony can be used as a measure of functional connectivity. In addition to the full analysis, we split the data into pairwise comparisons of 20 km distance bands apart. So, the first distance band included all pairwise site comparisons that were 0 to 20 km apart. The next band was all site comparisons of 20 to 40 km apart. The next band all site comparisons of 40 to 60 km apart, and so on. We found that the importance of landscape suitability in determining synchrony shows a hump-shaped relationship with distance. Matrix suitability was only non-significant in determining synchrony at the closest distance band apart of 0 to 20 km. We believe that this is because the speckled wood butterfly can probably disperse over hostile landscapes at shorter distances. Landscape permeability can be altered through the landscape management regime. Many agri-environment schemes, for example those that pay farmers to maintain flower-rich margins at the edge of their crops, may help reduce the hostility of the landscapes around protected areas. The technique presented in our paper may potentially be useful in assessing the effectiveness of such measures. As funding for conservation is limited, there's a great pressure to spend efficiently. Areas of low synchrony and low functional connectivity may be targeted as priority zones for landscape manipulation. These areas would particularly benefit from landscape management aims at promoting functional connectivity. A potential limitation of our study is that at present we do not account for the relationship between population synchrony and natural enemies. If the movement of these natural enemies is related to our measure of landscape suitability, then this may be reflected in the relationship we're finding between population synchrony and landscape suitability. However, a separate study on the ringlet butterfly did show that population synchrony was correlated with actual dispersal events from mark release recapture data. Therefore, our, te our technique does show promise as a potential tool to measure butterfly functional connectivity. In conclusion, we find a positive correlation between landscape suitability and population synchrony. This suggests that we might be able to use long-term monitoring data to measure functional connectivity. I've been feeling pretty low recently, you know. I'd like to disperse, but i got no. Pretty low, I'm isolated, you know. And what's worse, I'm inbred. Oh,